How's it going everyone? My name is Deathboy, and today I present the Ivory Tower Gate 2 Guide. In this video, I only went over the major gimmicks and mechanics. There's one gimmick in particular, the trap gimmick, that's kind of hard to understand and it gets a lot of new players that get into this raid, so I try to explain it in the best way I can. If you have any questions at all about the trap gimmick or the raid in particular, you can ask me in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. For Gate 2, you want to bring the following battle items. Atropine or Time Stop, Destruction Bomb, and Guardian Restraining Orb. Guardian Restraining Orb can be obtained right outside the Battle Workshop Station for Gate 2 and is a unique battle item that can only be used in Gate 2. The entire fight revolves around using this battle item which I will discuss later on. Before you enter Gate 2, you need to decide what order members will use the Guardian Restraining Orb. Most members tend to assign it by party number, where party number 1 will throw it first, then party number 2, etc. You also need to assign spots for the 95 mechanic. The support should take the spot directly in the middle, and DPS will decide to take top, bottom left, or bottom right. At the start of the fight, the boss will always roar with a red aura around him that will knock you back. When the red aura goes away, party number 1 should throw the orb on the boss. If you throw it too late, it could result in a boss jumping back away from where you threw the battle item. If this occurs, party number 2 should follow up immediately with throwing an orb wherever the boss lands. If you throw it too early, the orb will simply disappear and party number 2 should throw the orb, which can result in the boss jumping back with party number 3 having to follow up. Or you could just restart the raid. It takes 5 seconds for the orb to activate. If the boss stands in the orb within 1 to 2 seconds before the orb goes away, he will stomp on the ground with multiple red line telegraphs, then a stagger check will occur. You will need to finish this stagger check. During the stagger check or afterwards, red balls will come from the boss. Two behind and two in front. Every member should take this red ball. Taking the red ball will give you a massive cooldown reduction and give you a huge boost in damage. You will need to collect these red balls throughout the fight. The downside to taking these red balls is that if you get hit by the boss whatsoever, your health will continue to drop until it reaches 10%, with your character spitting up blood orbs around you. When your health reaches 10%, you should pick up the red orbs to regain health or use a health potion. If you try to heal early, your health will continue to drop until it reaches 10%, so do not heal early. If the red ball touches the boss, he will regain HP, which is why you have to collect it. After the first stagger check, the boss will do 3 attacks, then a second stagger check will occur that you need to complete. Once you finish the stagger check, the boss will perform 3 more attacks, then a third stagger check will occur. The third stagger check is considered the impossible stagger check that you cannot complete, so just focus on DPS. This would be a good time to use Atropine. After failing the third stagger check, the boss will stomp on the ground, noted by red telegraphs, then perform a 180 degree flame breath. Afterwards, he will follow up with a counter attack. Your priority is to counter the boss. Once you counter the boss, he will follow up with a stagger check. The moment the stagger check is completed, party number 2 and 3 should immediately throw the orb. Do not perform long animation skills when the stagger check is almost complete, as the timing for throwing these two orbs is tight. If done correctly, the boss will stomp on the ground, then a weak point icon will be shown in front of him. Use destruction bomb and weak point skills to complete the destruction check. This would also be a good time to use atropine. At this point in the fight, the boss should be close to 95 HP line mechanic. If overall group damage is low, you can decide to throw only one orb after the counter stagger check. This will force the boss to repeat the same rotation of 3 stagger checks again. If the boss is close to 110 to 105 HP lines, a orb should be thrown to force him into destruction. Your goal is to force the boss into destruction before 98 HP lines. When the boss is already trapped once, trapping him again will cause a destruction check. When you finish destruction on the boss, the boss will gain a buff that prevents it from being trapped again by the orb for roughly 44 seconds. This will also remove the buffs on the boss. If you fail to perform destruction on the boss by the time he gets 5 buffs, it will be a raid wipe. This is why you must force the boss into destruction throughout the fight. This long explanation may be confusing so I will give a quick TLDR. As a general rule to follow, throw 1 orb at the start, complete 2 stagger checks, DPS on the 3rd, the boss will follow up with the flame breath into counter, counter the boss, stagger the boss, 
Throw two orbs once the stagger check is complete, then complete the destruction check. The boss cannot be trapped again for 44 seconds. You will repeat this throughout the fight. When the group damage is low, the rule set to follow is a bit different. As stated before, when the boss is already trapped, trapping him again will cause a destruction check. So if the boss is at 120 to 130 HP lines during the counter into stagger check, you should throw one orb which will cause him to be trapped. Then throw another after the first or second stagger check is complete. This will cause a destruction check. As a reminder, you want to force destruction on the boss before 98 HP lines. And do not throw an orb during a stagger check. If the DPS is high, you will throw one orb after the first or second stagger check or before the third stagger check occurs, then complete destruction. As a reminder, you want to make sure you force destruction before 98 HP lines and do not throw an orb during a stagger check. There are multiple ways you can force the boss into a destruction check. You can wait until counter into stagger check, then throwing two orbs, or throw one orb while the boss is already trapped in between the stagger check finishing before the next one starts. You can see if the boss is already trapped by looking at his left or right foot. If it shows the battle item attached to it, that means he is already trapped. In addition, the safe spot for most of his attacks throughout the fight will be the side of the boss that is trapped. The first major mechanic happens at 95 HP lines or below. The boss will jump to the center and three clones of the boss will appear on the top side, bottom left side, and bottom right side of the map. Depending on where the real boss is located, will depend on where the clones spawn. You can see a red trail coming from the boss which tells you where the clones will spawn. Some parties will advocate to move clockwise or counterclockwise if clones do not spawn at your exact position. When the boss is at 95 HP lines, everyone should quickly scramble to their position. The support should follow the boss that is jumping to the middle. The support will get an icon above their head shown as two red eyes if you're standing in the middle. The boss will continue to follow you as you keep moving. If you stand still, he will lock onto your position and fire a flame breath in that direction. When the three clones spawn, it could be a clone that performs a counter, or a clone that gives you a one-eye icon above your head that will try to look for you. If it finds you, it is a raid wipe. Two clones will always be a counter clone, and one will always be a one-eye clone. You need to stand to the left or right side of the clone when it appears. This is because you won't have any idea what kind of clone spawns. If it is a one-eye clone, and you stand directly in front of it when it spawns, it will look at you and immediately cause a raid wipe. If you get the one eye icon above your head, you need to keep moving in a circle around the boss so that the front of the boss is never looking at your character. The two clones that glow blue must be countered. If one of the clones are not countered, it will cause a raid wipe. Once you counter a clone, a red ball will spawn on the map that you can pick up for extra cooldown reduction and damage. Once you finish countering your clone, Pick up a red ball and immediately move towards the one-eyed clone and kill it as soon as possible. This mechanic is time-based, so if you do not kill the one-eyed clone in time, it will be a raid wipe. The one-eyed clone can look at whoever does not have the one-eyed buff. It's only the one-eyed buff member that must keep moving to avoid frontal contact with the one-eyed clone. The two other DPS members should be killing the clone as fast as they can. If you counter both clones and kill the one-eyed clone in time, the mechanic will finish. If you are a support in the middle, you can force the boss in the middle to look in the opposite direction of your fellow members, then give an attack buff to help out with killing the clone. If a DPS member is close to the middle when the mechanic starts and gets the 2 eye icon instead, the support should improvise and go to that member's position instead to counter a clone or move around the one eyed clone to prevent a raid wipe. If a member gets a 3 eye icon above their head, it will be a raid wipe and this would only occur if no one is close to the one eye clone when it spawns, and instead aggros to the closest member, which would be the member in the middle. Go to your spot immediately when the boss is at 95 HP lines, as the transition to this mechanic happens quickly. When you finish the mechanic, the boss will do a few attacks, then eventually perform a counter attack. It can be a counter in which the boss moves back, then tries to charge forward, or he will curl up. You should perform this counter as it will follow up with the stagger check. Once the stagger check is completed, party number 4 can throw the orb to trap the boss. Counters will happen every 1 minute and 30 seconds after the first counter that happens in this gate. And every counter is followed up with the stagger check. 
you should aim to force a destruction check on the boss around 40 HP lines, since the next major mechanic happens at 30 HP lines. Remember, you don't want the boss to gain 5 buffs as it will cause a raid wipe. Forcing a destruction check will remove the buffs on the boss. The last major mechanic happens at 30 HP lines or below. The boss will climb the tower and your camera will zoom out. You need to stand in the center of the map as a large AoE attack will occur where the center is safe. Afterwards, a safe spot will be shown at the edge of the map. Instead of holding down your cursor to move, you should click once to the safe spot to have your character move to that position. When you get close to the safe spot, your camera will zoom in. This can cause awkward movement if you hold down the mouse button to move to the safe spot. In a moment, the boss will perform a flame breath starting from the left or right side. Stay at the edge of the map and walk towards the direction that the flame breath came from. Once the flame breath passes by, you are safe to go across. Red balls will spawn in that move across the map. Getting hit by these red balls will imprison you, and the only way to be freed is via sacred charm or support cleanse. Be sure to dodge these red balls as best as you can. As you get closer, you will see blue telegraphs. You can quickly spacebar through the blue telegraph to finally get close to the boss. A stagger check will be shown and all members need to complete this stagger check. The moment you complete the stagger check, a red telegraph will be shown. Be sure to move outside as it does massive damage. This will complete the mechanic and the last phase of the fight begins. Red fire will surround the edge of the map. Standing in this fire will deal massive damage. One random member will get a red eye icon above their head. This means the boss is going to charge towards you or leap to your position. The one eye member should stay in the middle of the map. Two members need to throw an orb in the middle and the member with the one eye icon needs to guide the boss towards the middle so that the boss can jump on the orb or dash through the orb. If the boss charges, he will then follow up with another charge. Usually, after the second or third charge, the boss will be trapped. If done successfully, the boss will be pinned to the ground with a destruction check that you must complete. The red ball gimmick will no longer happen in this phase. Instead, the boss will gain a buff over time that increases the amount of damage he takes, but also increases the amount of damage he deals. Once the 44 second buff on the boss goes away, you can decide to trap the boss again so that he repeats the 3 stagger check pattern. Counter attacks will no longer occur in this phase. And that will conclude my guide for Ivory Tower Gate 2. If you have enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I plan to finish Gate 3 and 4 in the upcoming weeks. With all of that being said, I hope you have a wonderful time raiding in Lost Ark. Peace.